January 2021 saw an unprecedented amount of snow fall in the southeast of Belgium in the High Fens, which is the highest plateau in the country. With the snow falling, the country was in the midst of its second lockdown. The fatigue of the pandemic was taking its toll. Belgians needed to get out and the snow was a welcome distraction for families and children. Such was the excitement the High Fens were inundated with visitors. Car parks were overflowing and the major roads, already difficult to pass due to the snow, were lined with cars parked on the verges. The local authorities took immediate measures and closed the whole region over the New Year period. I felt a sense of frustration by this closure. I understood the necessity, but I knew that winters like this really were an exception. The last time I'd photographed in the High Fens with this amount of snowfall was four years previously. The High Fens is a region that is unique. For the landscape photographer, Belgium is not a country of high mountains, deep ravines or valleys, impressive waterfalls or coastal cliffs. It's a country that has its own natural beauty, but it's much more muted, much more understated. It isn't the land of the big vista. It's a country where you have to invest yourself as a photographer to seek and appreciate what the landscapes have to offer. It requires time, patience and a deep appreciation of the landscape. And so when the weather conditions permit, you have to take advantage and you have to get out there with your camera. Once the New Year period had passed, the local authorities opened the region again during weekdays. Once this news was announced, I immediately packed my gear and headed to the region, filled with a sense of excitement and anticipation. And I wasn't disappointed photographically. The landscape was covered with a thick blanket of snow. Visibility was poor with winter fog, but these conditions were ideal for the type of subjects available. The High Fens is a region dotted with trees. There are forests and woodlands nearby, but the Fens themselves have isolated trees or small groups of trees. And it's these subjects that really form the basis of my compositions. As I continued to walk the trail, the wind was howling and making it feel much colder than it actually was. There are vast areas of the Fens where you may not find anything to photograph. But the secret to this location is to really slow down, to stop and to look. What may seem uninteresting often has hidden gems, hiding in the distance, out of sight. Here I spotted something, but to make it work, I needed a long lens. I took the 100 to 400 mm on my 5D Mark III and I started to compose. These isolated branches pointing in opposite directions caught my eye. I loved the fact that the snow had built up on the edges of the branches and there was symmetry in the composition. But I felt the image would be better in portrait orientation and indeed the result has much more impact. It's simpler and helps the main subjects stand out much more. The landscape itself is a combination of marshes and bogs. So many sections require you to walk on elevated wooden platforms. There were still many visitors to the region at this time and so these walkways became quite busy and made photography quite challenging. As I walked along this narrow wooden walkway, I noticed a lone birch tree. The branches were covered in snow and ice, and one branch had buckled under the weight of the snow. It was a beautiful tree, and I wanted to capture this. I set my tripod up at the side of the walkway, hoping I would leave enough room for others to pass by. I started to consider the composition, first looking at a portrait orientation. Despite my tripod being in the snow to the side of the walkway, there were a steady stream of walkers coming towards me on the horizon. I've had my Fuji for about one year, but I'm still learning. It's been a big jump to medium format photography and it's one that I've enjoyed and a process that's really helped push my photography on. But I only have one lens, the 32 to 64 mm f4. And even if that is one of the wider options for this system, it isn't as wide as I'm used to on a full frame camera. So this was a situation that I couldn't really change. I couldn't physically move because of the circumstances I was in. I couldn't move backwards from the wooden walkway and I couldn't go off that wooden walkway into the fens itself. I would have just sunk in the snow. You can see that I'm switching between portrait and landscape orientation with the camera to try and get this to work. And the reason I'm doing this is for balance. Whilst the subject fits within the frame, for me, there was something that was missing and that was space. I needed a sense of space and scale with this image and subject, and this lens was bringing the viewer too close to the subject. Whilst I like the resulting image, it's more of a compromise than what I had pre-visualized, but I do take the positives from the experience. I know the limits of the 32 to 64 mm lens now, and that eventually I will need the wider 23 mm lens for this system 
to make compositions like this work. I had my Canon 5D Mark III with me because I have more lenses for that camera and so I used the much wider 16 to 35mm f2.8 lens. The wider lens with the subject straight down the middle incorporates that space that I wanted. It is simple but it works much better as a composition. As I approached the main plateau, conditions started to deteriorate. Visibility became much worse. The wind became stronger and I was walking fully exposed to all the elements. At times I would cross paths with other walkers and there really wasn't much space to pass. Looking at the snow either side of the walkway, you could see glimpses of the marshes showing that the snow was fresh and the land hadn't fully frozen beneath that cover of snow. I was glad to reach the end of the walkway and come to a familiar spot that I've photographed many times before. However, on this occasion, the snow cover on the tree created such a magical scene. I was at the perfect distance for the 32 to 64 mm lens at the widest angle of 32 mm. So I used the Fuji with all its medium format goodness to capture this scene. White snow, white clouds, and the walkway to the right epitomizes the high fens in winter. As I continued to walk the trail, fatigue and cold set in. I still had several kilometers to return to my car and I had stupidly left without my water bottle. I put my head down and pushed on to get back to the car as soon as I could to rehydrate and get warm. The result was I didn't take many more clips for the video. I stopped occasionally to take the weight of my pack off my back and take the odd photo, which I will leave you with at the end of this video. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like a comment and to help my small channel to continue to grow here on YouTube a subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you at the next one.